All Welcome. right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Nelson Nigel, who is in a little more chillier New York. How are you doing, Nelson? Doing fantastic in New York City. Cold. <laughs> and, Cold. And Nel yeah, I can imagine. I've been uh, I've been to New York plenty of times in uh, December and, and January, February. I know it uh, can be bitter, but um, Nelson is the resilient uh, founder and CEO of Kid Moto Technology, uh, and transformed a personal challenge into a thriving business. In 2016, as an Uber driver, you observed the absence of child car seats and taxis and car services leaving parents in a vulnerable position. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. I remember that from when my son was young. Recognizing the gap in the market uh, left by Uber and Lyft, and Nelson developed a mobile app to offer convenient and safe solution for parents traveling with small children, particularly to and from airports, and it's become a trusted brand, connecting parents with a network of skilled drivers, providing secure car seats for airport transfers in 52 US cities. And you did all this despite you, you've, you've built a successful career, despite you know, growing up in poverty and then having a, a and then having a, a life altering, you know, accident uh, or uh, subway, which uh, but you've been able to build Kid Moto and you've built seven figure revenue and built a valuation 25 million, which is phenomenal. And what we're going to talk about today is that business mindset or that mindset of when you're knocked down is getting back up again. So perhaps, uh, Nelson, maybe start off with telling us a little bit about, you know, um, number one, the the accident and stuff that you had left you in a coma. You know, what happened and what changed when you came out of that coma? You know what? Um, uh, I, I cannot remember when I was young, but uh, uh, now I was in a coma for a few weeks and I was hit by a subway train. So, mm -hmm. uh, don't speak about that. I, Think about it that often, but yeah, came out and I just wanted, just you know, just just want it because um, life is short. Yeah, and uh, and then uh, and then despite that, you know, you uh, you obviously then spotted this this gap in the market, and uh, and then what what drove you to say yes, I can do this, I can fill this gap in the market. You just have to do it. Uh, can't be stopped. Don't don't stop. Um, everything is possible if you just work hard. Mm -hmm. And just, so, uh, not stop. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what were what were some of the what were some of the challenges you had to overcome at the beginning when you were getting Kid Moto up and running? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything. I'll tell you, just about everything. Um, you, you know, I. Um, I read a quote. Uh, I heard someone say it online. You know, if you work twice as hard as the other person, you get twice as much done. And uh, that's that's a good way to look at it. Um, if you if put in uh, twenty, you know, if the average person is working eight hours a day and you put in sixteen, you're getting, you know, just about double done. And if you become more efficient as a person, you just get a lot more done than that next person. So if you're, you know, if you start off here but you keep doing here, then you know, you just leave your competition in the dust. Yeah, it's like that. It's overworking people. Yeah, it's like that old saying, isn't it? Like the harder you work, the luckier you get. Yeah, yeah. The harder work, it's uh, it just puts you in the right position because you just uh, you learn so much more, and you just uh, sharpen your skill set. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so a lot of people, a lot of people would often would like to do something like what you're doing, especially nowadays, because more and more people are are looking to maybe work for themselves or be entrepreneurial and all of that. But you know, they they find lots of reasons why they can't do it. Uh, and uh, so, what, what would your advice be to people like that? Because obviously, you had to say, "Yeah, I'm going to do it. I can do this." So you have to convince yourself or, that you could do it. I think some people like love the idea but they just don't have the confidence to actually do it. Um, you know, um, I don't even know what's just if it's just confidence, but it, it's also the, the, the mentality to work hard, right? Uh, the, the grass uh, always seems greener, but if you're going into business for yourself, uh, you're working, you know, literally 
twice as hard as a uh, regular nine to five. Mm -hmm. And so you just, you just have to want it, right? And uh, the way I, I, you know, I tell everyone, listen, uh, visualize a hamster wheel, or running on a, ha a hamster running on a hamster wheel. And if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll keep getting what you're getting. It's just that simple. If you want to change, your out change the outcome, uh, uh, go out, start a business, You'll work harder, but you'll, you know you have uh, you have uh, uh, you could choose your destiny. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, that you know many people who start their own businesses, you know, will often say is that uh, you have to be prepared that it's going to take a little longer than you would like it because normally, often when you have an idea and you go out, you know, you you get very excited and maybe you get very overly optimistic about how quickly this can this can. Uh, you know, you can get up and running and you can get making revenue and everything and all of that. So well, uh, it, it, was that your experience? Did it take a little longer than you were expecting? Oh, John, there is no overnight success. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to work hard and it uh, overnight successes are a dream, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you have to work hard uh, and the harder you work, the more hours you put in, the better you get at some at, at things. And that really just, uh, uh, that's just the um, uh, the the your work is is going to determine how how successful you become or how successful at you know creating your, your dreams. Yeah, and it's you it, are. yeah, and, and unfortunately today is like people think that things can be done overnight. I always remember there was a and there was an English band Pulp, and when they had their first uh, major kind of chart hit. Somebody said to them, Somebody interviewing said, said, oh, you know, your overnight success. And they said, yeah, yeah, it only took 15 years. Only yeah. 15 years to get <laughs> yeah. overnight success. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm a 15-year overnight success, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, it, no, you have to dig, dig, dig a foundation. And no, just take, like, Birds Dubai, for example, right? Mm -hmm. um, Birds Dubai went down 225 uh, feet, mm -hmm. right? So... No one sees the building going down. They only see the building after it went down, but then then it started going up. Yep. Right. So, uh, you know, the World Trade Center or you know, any one of these um, large high rises, you have to dig deep. You have to d d dig that foundation. That's the hard part. That's the real hard mm -hmm. part. And, and then it goes up easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, who did you um, when you were going through this when you were going through this process? Uh, did you have people you could surround yourself like people you could reach out to or mentors or people you could get advice from? Because I think that's always another key thing is like who you're able to you know tap into. I uh, uh, I I I think I've had I've, I've had a couple, but uh, it's. Um, I, I didn't have that much because I was um, uh, I was too busy working. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't you don't even have time for a phone call uh, because when when you're building and you're trying to become um, yeah and you're starting a business, uh, you really have to uh, uh, surround yourself with everything and, and study as much as possible. Um, I I just didn't have that many people behind me because I you know you you really want to focus um, and, and learn. Uh, and just keep doing and you know, sometimes you just you know you, you just you just don't have enough time mm -hmm. there's no there's no pleasure time no pleasure yeah. so what um as w once you got this uh, once you uh, you know were ready to to go to market just talk to me a little bit about those early days about trying to go to market trying to get people uh into this program like how what was that like it's hard uh super hard especially when you have a new product right but when you have an existing product uh it's easy mm -hmm. uh the, 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 the you know the consumers understand your product they understand uh you know, essentially an earphone is an earphone etc right uh but if you have something brand new you have to uh educate everyone and you have to market to get it in front of everyone uh that's not easy um uh you know, we use digital marketing, so, you know, social media is great, uh, but still it costs money. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a, that was always a problem uh, because we were unfunded and uh, 
Facebook ads cost a lot of money. Google ads cost a lot of money. Yep. Um, but uh, you know, getting in front of everyone, uh, you know, it, it co costs a lot of money. And that was a big problem. Yeah. And that's something I think a lot of people underestimate when they when they start something is they underestimate maybe how much uh, how much capital they will need and for how long they will need it. And, uh, you know, before there they can be self-sufficient. And I think that's what happens with a lot of small businesses is that they is that they run out of capital because they don't they again, their horizons are not long enough or they you know, don't manage that money well in the beginning. Or the other part too is, uh, you know, they suddenly realize, yeah, I, I'm, I'm having revenue coming in, you know, but I, on the top line, but it's taking me, you know, 30, I'm not getting paid immediately. Um, so I'm looking at this revenue, but I'm looking at my bank account and there's nothing in it. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's all part of business. Uh, it's hard. It, it really is. Uh, take take Uber for example. Uber started making profits like fourteen years later, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Jeff Bezos, Amazon, nine years later. So uh, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, trust me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now that you've now that you've gotten established, uh, is there anything that's is there anything that surprised you has surprised you about uh, about your business as it started to take off? Uh, uh, the customer engagement, right? We, 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 we focus a lot on customer journey, uh, creating a great product for the consumer. And sometimes when I hear the feedback, I look at the reviews and, uh, it, 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 it really uh, tells us how well we're doing of a company and how well we're doing creating value for the consumer, mm -hmm. because when you see a review or a consumer um, you know, coming back and saying, I'm going to say, I like, you know, love your product. You know, that's kind of like a, you know, you know, realization that, hey, you know what? We actually did what we said we were going to do. And people actually um, uh, benefit from what we're, what we're trying to do. Yeah, and it's interesting. I think today that uh, you know, unfortunately, because there's so many times we get to, we've been disappointed that if somebody just delivers on the experience they promise, we're like we're ecstatic as opposed to being yeah, that's exactly what I expect. We're almost ecstatic because we've you know we're not expecting always to get you know what we what we pay for. So and and to your point, um, reviews and recommendations that's really the currency of the of the present and the future absolutely and uh it, you know to see you know that kid Bono is a uh, national 50, 52 cities mm -hmm. consumers are using us nationwide it tells us uh, the strength of the brand and the reach of the brand and on top of that knowing that we can create uh value for people uh you know far away as in like salt lake city or seattle or Phoenix, or uh, Austin, or uh, New Orleans. You know, it, it's you know, it, it's not easy, mm -hmm. but it's possible. Yeah. So uh, when you start, when when you see those reviews, or when you're you know, open another city or whatever, like what what's what sense of satisfaction does that give you, uh, considering you know the journey you've been on? It it gives me a lot of satisfaction because it was all planned. Uh, you start with a vision, you focus on that vision, and you execute. And when you see that you know, a customer is raving and telling their friends and they're using you, you know that you you know you basically got what you put what you set out to get you know, to get. Um, and you, again, your consumers are uh, are happy with what they have uh, you know paid for. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, a, that's a really good point that I just want to underline there is, you know, you had the vision and you stuck to the vision and the execution of the vision, because sometimes it can become, especially in the early days, you can sort of get distracted maybe and see, oh, maybe there's a little bit of an opportunity over here for a little bit of revenue, or maybe I could do a little bit of this as well. And you kind of dilute your focus. Were you at, at any stage, you know, distracted or tempted to do kind of complementary things or go in a slightly different direction or did you just stay laser focused no 
that's the magic word no mm -hmm. uh you have to stay laser focused you have to focus on what you uh on what you want to set up to to do because if you if you do get distracted you start you know just your energy gets dissipated and you can you lose focus and then uh, at that same time now everything just you have mixed energies going everywhere yeah. and it's not really going to take you to where you want to be yeah, absolutely and uh and so what are you what are you, what are your plans for the future i mean this has been a pretty good success this has been a really good success so far where do you where do you go from here the sky's the limit i'll tell you that john um no we're we're further you know when we started out you know this this was a goal but as you're growing in it you don't realize how far you've come mm -hmm. right and it's kind of like it's kind of like hey you're climbing a mountain before you know it, you almost need a ticket you, like you still you don't you're like it's unbelievable right and um so now we can you can uh, now that you're you know you're climbing that mountain you start seeing the more the more you see the the more you can achieve basically right and now we have now that we've created a national infrastructure now we can see that hey we can go there we can go there we can go there and expand our product line so we're moving into uh, other different product lines uh, and cargo and non-emergency medical uh with uh, airlines or cruise lines well, that's uh, that's that's incredible. And but as you said, I mean, uh, sometimes, and I like you brought up that point because I think sometimes you know we're so forward focused and we're everything in the future that sometimes we do need to just stop for a moment and glance over our shoulders and see how far we've come, not dwell in the past, but see how far we've come and sort of you know give yourself that yes, we 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 come this far, we're doing great. That means we can continue to push forward but and i think that sometimes people when they don't look back at their journey they sometimes think oh i haven't done it you know we're not i'm not where i'm supposed to be i haven't done this but when you look back you go no look at how much far you've come look how resilient you've been you can continue your journey that that <laughs> that hits home john i'll tell you <laughs> that because sometimes you don't realize how far you've come and um it's uh uh it, it's uh and but you can't give up yep right so you could uh you can you can't give up and you just can't say oh i've, uh, I've come this far um and it's time to stop you just have to keep going forward and uh you know part of part of the journey john is one thing that i've realized is that it doesn't stop <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't stop so so it's it's like um it's like um you know this, this entrepreneurial spirit right mm -hmm. it's like think about you know you know climbing climbing trees and climbing houses right if you can climb right um you start off climbing a small tree then you say hey you fall down but, but, but you have to fall down yeah right because if you don't fall down and you don't fail you can't really learn anything and you can't really get bruised up and you, you, you fall off from the small tree then you see another tree you say hey i can climb that tree you, you, you climb that tree, you fall down, and you see another tree. You say, I can climb that tree. And you know, before you know it, you're climbing a four-story house, an eight-story building, a 10-story building. Before you know it, hey, I see birds Dubai. Let me go climb birds Dubai. So it never stops. Yeah, yeah. But it's a great point you say about you got to be you got to be prepared to fall down and get back up again. It's like, I, re I remember when my my son was young and he was uh, he was a competitive skateboarder. And uh, one of the things in any of the people who, you know, when somebody starts skating, the first thing that's said to them is you, you got to be prepared to fall. Skate, or, you know, learning skating is all about falling and getting back up again. Exactly. And I think what you're uh, describing is business too. It is. You have to fall down. You have to get bruised up. And the more you get bruised up, the tougher your skin gets. Remember how a wound heals, you know. <laughs> You know, it, it gets scraped up. It gets hard. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, um, Nelson, this has been this has been fascinating. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. Uh, all of Nelson's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. Uh, my name is Nelson Nigel. I'm founder of Kid Motor Technologies. Uh, 
now it's Moto Nation and we're doing great things in the transportation industry and we have multiple apps in the app store. Yeah, well, listen, fantastic. Look, congratulations. Uh, thanks again, Nelson. Thank you for watching and listening. A great, inspiring story. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.